For the past year, the Federation has been on the back foot. But this month, the Federation turns the tables on the Dominion and launches an invasion of the Cardassian Union. Greetings, Law members. This is the Dominion War. Now, last month, the Dominion seized Benzar in the Calandra Offensive, making it their most significant gain after capturing Beta Z back in October, and now they add another Federation homeworld to their list of conquests. Also last month, the Romulans made their presence felt in the Northern Front, completing Operation Raptarum Vindicta and heading to capture the final Dominion supply base, but they would be confronted by three Jem'Hadar fleets. And this month, that battle concludes. The Battle of the Giants, as it is known, concludes by about the 15th, with the Dominion withdrawing successfully in good order. And while the Romulans did secure their objective of the supply base, they paid dearly for it, and they certainly won't be inclined to attack again anytime soon, but not after the mauling they were given by the Dominion. Now, further south, the Klingons break through to New Gaul to rescue the Klingon fleets, which the Cardassians continue to destroy. They mount a joint task force of three fleets to push through and clear out New Gaul. That will open the encirclement and allow the fleets to escape. And further along the southern front, at the far end, at Benzar, the Allies move to liberate Benzar. Two fleets each move to strike Xanthras and Titus, and this will drive back the main support fleets that are covering Benzar. This leaves a single Gem Hadar fleet at Benzar, which the Romulans successfully drive out. And by the 15th, the Dominion are forced back to the Rematis system. From there, Starfleet also launches an attack on Boradis, once again using two fleets to concentrate on a single Cardassian fleet and driving them back. The Klingons then drive to Catula and create a salient around Beta Z. The Allies know very well that the Dominion are firmly entrenched in Beta Z, and to go directly at it will likely result in a bloodbath. Their best option is to cut off the Dominion fleets from Beta Z and leave the fleet and garrison stationed there isolated, either force them to surrender or simply drain them of supplies and resources. But that's not the big news this month. The big news comes more towards the central front, as an allied joint task force consisting of a Romulan legion, a Klingon fleet under General Martok, and a Federation fleet launch an attack on Chintoka and manage to seize control of the system, but they do take heavy losses thanks to the new Cardassian weapon platforms. These weapon platforms are relatively new, they're based off an older model, but they have new automated systems built in and of course central generator which serves as a remote power source for these fortifications and this makes a massive difference to the numbers that they're able to field. They're able to field them in much greater numbers and they are more powerful as they don't have to leave provision for any kind of reactor or even any kind of crew and it makes it a very very effective defensive weapon. While the Allies do work out how to defeat them they lose a lot of ships in the process and not to mention the Dominion quickly respond to the breakthrough at Chintoka and make sure to surround the system and stop any further allied advance. Now with the Dominion retreat in the north, they are increasingly conscious of the future Romulan threat. They know very well that the Romulans can simply bypass their fleets as and when they choose. The only way to defeat the Romulan fleets from now on will be defence in depth, and this means more ships in in-depth positions, which may not be immediately on the front line, so they need to narrow their front line and the sector they choose to take the ships from is from the northernmost front. It's been the least active, it wasn't very decisive back in the first offensives and hasn't seen any further action since. It's largely an irrelevant front and they need the ships now to defend Cardassian territory. So the Dominion will fall back from the northern front and allow Starfleet to retake that territory. And so the Federation worlds up there that have been occupied since, well since the start of the war last year, after one year solid of occupation, are now free, not by any stunning move of liberation, not by a 
massive attack by Starfleet, but by simply the strategic withdrawal of the Dominion. And on one level, this is very good because it is, of course, Federation. these worlds have been liberated without bloodshed, but also it tells you a lot about the state of the Dominion and that they are worried about their strategic situation, but also, while they may be worried about their strategic situation, they are not neglecting it, and they are fortifying their position, and it does mean that any future attempts to make incursions into Cardassian space are going to be much, much harder, if not impossible. It doesn't look like any allied offensives into Cardassia are going to be the same wars of sweeping advances and maneuvers that the Dominion has enjoyed. It looks like the Dominion is going to make them grind their way forward. Cardassia is obviously far smaller than the Federation and thus far easier to defend, and thus the Dominion will make them pay dearly for every system gained. And that leaves us at the end of the month. With many Federation systems being liberated, it looks like the Calandra Offensive has finally been undone by these Federation counterattacks. The Dominion are also forced to make several strategic withdrawals in preparation to deal with the future Romulan with a continued Romulan threat. And the Klingons finally break through to New Gaul and open the pocket, liberating the two surviving Klingon fleets. The Federation has gained the initiative and they have driven back the Dominion, but at great cost. And the Dominion is not going to sit idly by. This war is now one year old. And by the looks of things, it's going to get older. See you all next time.